How's it going, folks? And welcome back. Today, we have the conclusion of Erlen Haaland trapped at Dover Athletic. The year is 2037. We left things with Dover heading back to the championship. Let's see how a 36-year-old Erlen Haaland carried them, shall we? Yes, gang, welcome back. As I've already said, I hope you're doing fantastic. I hope you're excited for this part three. Apologies, it's taken a little longer than I wanted it to to bring this your way. But yes, today we have the conclusion of things. Of course, when we left things, John Flanagan was Dover manager. They'd been promoted to the championship. I can already see here, Erlen Haaland has 15 goals, nine assists and a 7.09 rating, which is not as dominant uh, average rating as I was perhaps expecting him to get in the championship when we started things. In fact, compared to his previous few seasons, it is a little bit of a decline. Now, considering they got relegated last time he scored, uh, well, 19 goals in the league, I'm not optimistic for their chances here. How has Flanagan done? The answer is that Flanagan's not what's happened here. Manager history, John Flanagan was sacked, and then Reese Nelson has taken charge. He's managed Dagenham, he's managed Shrewsbury, and now he's managed Dover. How? F I mean, we're not even. We're in 2037, and Reese Nelson is the manager, aged 37. Like, we're not even that far in the future, and weird stuff's happening. Now, I suppose the big question is, how did they do in the championship? And if we just have a look at things, they they weren't in the playoff final. Where did they end up finishing in the league? Oh wow. Okay, they finished 21st. They avoided the drop. I mean, that's pretty impressive. I've noticed here that Haaland isn't in the average rating charts. Can we see him anywhere, Haaland? Uh, no, no, he's not even in the top 20. I mean, that's pretty disappointing. That's quite embarrassing, really, isn't it, for Erling Haaland? Um, but Dover did stay up despite sacking their manager. I feel like at this point now, I need to see the season um, kind of pass positions. Okay, wow. Um, Reese Nelson has pulled a blinder here. They were stuck in the relegation zone very firmly and they managed to escape under his leadership. Look at this start to the season they had. Now, to be fair, it looks like towards the bottom, they did fall off just a little bit. But nevertheless, they stayed up and the system they played was a 4-2-3-1 wide, which I was going to say I assume Harlan played up front in, but apparently Phil Crow has been playing at striker on loan from Man City at Dover, and Haaland has been relegated to playing on the wing, at least to end the season. To be fair, for most of the year, he played as a striker. He got a 7.04 rating there. He actually got a 7.43 rating as a right attacking mid. So the moral of the story here is when Erlen Haaland starts to lose his pace, as counterintuitive as it might sound, whoever's managing him should stick him out on the wing. Now, looking at things here, Haaland was the top goal scorer in the team. And to be fair, they didn't really score that many goals. So he was definitely a critical part in them staying up. David Helm was the man who got the most assists for them. He got 10 assists in 42, which is not an outrageous number. And unfortunately for Dover, he's under a £10 million bid from Cardiff. I say, unfortunately, £10 million to this kind of team is probably pretty huge. That is probably the kind of money that has a chance of keeping them up. If we look at the salaries per year, they are the second lowest in the league alongside Burton, and Burton did just go down. So, uh, yeah, that gives you an idea of where things are at. Dover don't have much money. I mean, if we look at their transfer history, that's a bit, they actually spent £8 million this year to stay up. So they have spent some pretty big money. Um, they signed Huang Kai from Guangzhou. Of course they signed a Chinese international centre-back. Why wouldn't they do that? Well, I ended things last episode saying, I wonder if Haaland and Dover are going to build for when he leaves. It looks like they are trying to build. If they can reinvest this money that they're getting through Helm successfully, I back them to stay up in the championship. We'll go forward a further two years to 2039. That will leave us with two more years after that of Haaland at Dover. I'm confident they're still going to be in the championship. I'm just hoping that Reese Nelson and his merry band of men won't fail me. Whenever I do these kind of videos, I get quite attached to the teams that we follow, which I realise is completely irrational, but it does fill me with a little bit of joy to see Erlen Haaland as captain in 2039. He is 38 years old, Dover is still in the championship, and they just finished 8th, which, uh, I mean, unfortunately that means they didn't make the playoffs, but they got mighty close. In fact, they finished one point behind Reading in 5th, uh, which is absolutely crazy. Um, the good news there is 
They didn't get relegated. How did they do over the last couple of seasons? So they finished 21st, then last season they finished 16th, and now they've just finished 8th. So they are actually starting to build. Uh, their pre-season prediction, by the way, was 18th. So they have overachieved, um, but they've done really, really well. I did note that Daniel Bruce is now their manager. So naturally, I need to know what became of Reese Nelson. Uh, looking at things, he was sacked a year and 15 days ago. So he was sacked at the end of last season. Daniel Bruce has come in. I'm going to be honest, not familiar with Daniel Bruce. Apparently... Apparently, he plays for New Mexico. So if there's any New Mexico United fans out there, Daniel Bruce, let him know that he's going to be heading over to Dover in 2039. Now, I did wonder with some of the transfer money they'd been spending if they had had any takeovers Dover. You can see here a local consortium took them over a couple of years ago, and they did improve their training facilities in that time. Again, if we just look at the salary side of things... They are not at the bottom anymore. They're still 21st, so they're not really spending much next to everyone else. But, I mean, they've they've done very well. I realise at this point we're just following Dover. Should we go have a look at Haaland? So he's 38. His acceleration is now at 7. His pace is now at 8. He is starting to lose the ability to jump, I've noticed, and, and the ability to dribble. For some reason, when players get older in Football Manager, as well as their physicals going, dribbling just seems to drop at the same time. But he is still... A very, very good player for this level. He got 16 goals and 6 assists. If we look at the, the previous year as well, he got 14 goals and 7 assists there. In fact, over the last couple of seasons, he's done better than their first season back in the championship, which is really cool to see. Uh, if we have a look at Dover and their squad, presumably he wasn't their top goal scorer this year, and he wasn't. They signed Luca Meyer, who is a Swish, Swish? A Swiss player. A Swish player. He's not Swiss. <laughs> Should we try again? He's from Switzerland, everyone. He looks absolutely awful with six finishing, but he's got 20 goals in the championship. So what we've learned from this video is that actually composure and finishing don't matter at all. If you have long shots and good jumping reach, you will be quite good in FM22. Okay, maybe I'm being a little bit facetious here. It's worth noting he only played 36 games in the season of 46 games he could possibly play. Um, if we just look at his history with injuries... He has had the odd knock here and there over the last couple of years. No major injuries to speak of, but they are starting to add up a little bit. You know, pulled uh, ankle ligaments, pulled hamstring, twisted ankle. Missed eight weeks of football across the last, what, six months? That's not an insignificant amount of football to miss, really. Uh, I guess old age is slowly but surely starting to catch up with Haaland. Anyway, we're going to go forward to 2041. That will be as Haaland finishes up his time at Dover. He moves on. We'll see how he does in his final two years. And then beyond that, we'll go see if he gets a job in football and also see how Dover fare without him. Now that they've climbed up all these leagues, have they built sustainably? Usually they haven't built sustainably in this situation, teams, but maybe Dover are going to book the trend. I'm optimistic for them. So the year is 2041. We are 20 years in the future. Haaland has lost all ability to run. He's got five dribbling. He's still incredible going forward, mind you. And he got seven goals in the championship with a 6.76 average rating. Yeah, okay, he has declined, hasn't he now? We can say aged 40, he might not be championship quality anymore. You can see he got 15 goals in 46 games the season before last. So he actually played in every single league game last season. Unfortunately, this season, most recently gone... Seven goals, three assists. Where did Dover finish? They finished 17th. Daniel Bruce is still their manager as well. So they haven't gone up. They haven't gone down either, if we wanted to look at the positives. After that eighth place finish, they finished 17th. And they've just finished 17th again. So you can't really knock them. They've been consistent over the last couple of years, Dover. Um, I'm now interested to know who's been getting the goals for them. And the answer is Ramon McCann, who is really average. I feel like Dover don't have actually that many good players, and I'm a little bit worried for them. Um, hmm, who's their highest earner? Martin Brown. Okay, now I'm really worried for them. What was their pre-season prediction? Okay, they were predicted to finish 20th with Erlin Haaland. This doesn't bode well, ladies and gentlemen. This, this does not bode well. We can look at their history of achievements here. Um, they've won nothing. Here's kind of their route to success. Of course, this whole video started back in 2021. 
They've had the rise up, to be fair. You know, they had that little setback, but they have now settled back in the championship. I am slightly worried for them, though. Obviously, Haaland didn't really do the business this year. His contract's about to expire. He's about to go to Dortmund. We'll leave things by having a quick look at his biography before we jump forward. Um, you can have a pause and a look at things here. He's been quite a good player over the years, but it'd be fair to say ever since they really emerged as a championship side, Dover haven't quite lived up to those expectations. If we look at his milestones here, he's been in the seasonal best 11 just about each and every single year. He's not been in the, the Norway best 11 in quite a few years now. I imagine he retired from international football a little while ago. There's not that many individual awards he's achieved here. I suppose that's the issue, isn't it, with being stuck in the championship? You're not going to get any Ballon d'Or votes playing for Dover against Blackburn on a Wednesday night. So Haaland ended up getting 162 caps and 102 goals. Uh, he's looking at the possibility of taking up coaching with a view to becoming a manager. And uh, actually, he did retire from international football apparently five years ago. So why is the media opinion a star player? Football manager, you are drunk. And if you were wondering, Haaland's final career stats for Dover, 822 appearances, 483 goals. That's quite a lot less than I was expecting, to be honest, over a 20-year period. He scored no goals in his last five games. And now we're going to go into the future and see how he fares at Dortmund and see how Dover gets on. I think I will join you in a few years' time. I'll go forward an indefinite period, see what's happening, figure out what's a good time to come back. How's Harlan going to be getting on? Where are Dover? Let's go find out together. So I holidayed forward, and then I holidayed forward some more, and then I holidayed again. We're now five years in the future. Harland has been unemployed for five years. Yeah, yeah. He went to Dortmund. He went there for a half a year and then was just let go. He played four games in the Bundesliga. They realised... A 41-year-old Erlen Haaland isn't very good in the Bundesliga. He then played for their B team, got a 6.19 average rating, and then was let go. Uh, and he's been an unemployed coach ever since. And to be honest, I'm a little bit surprised about that because compared to some players that retire and become staff, he's not absolutely terrible. But yeah, there really isn't a great deal to tell you here other than the fact he's a Dover Athletic icon. Yeah, that's right. He didn't even make it into the Legends category at Dover, which I think is just a little bit sad, really. You can see his full biography here. If you want to pause and have a read of the essay, you can do that. But this is YouTube, not Wikipedia. We need moving images. We're going to Dover. How have you done since his departure? They're 22nd in League One. We're only five years in the future and they've been relegated twice. Oh, Dover. What happened to you? So they got those back-to-back -back 17th place finishes. Then they finished 21st and avoided the drop in ha their third season without Haaland. They then finished 23rd, 6th, I guess they lost in the playoffs, 15th, media prediction of 7th, and they've just finished 22nd. Max Dean, you have sabotaged this club. I say that, he's actually quite a good manager. Who was the manager before? Who have they got through in this time? Alexander Wickens was manager for less than a year. Harry Kane was manager for 108 days and was sacked. Harry Kane has sabotaged my video and my Dover Athletic fandom. He's not had a job since either. Harry Kane, you are a disgrace. Have I, I mean, is anyone else as upset as me? I'm never going to be able to look at Harry Kane in the same way ever again. It's just a great big shame. Relegated from League One at the hands of Harry Kane. I say it, it's, ent it's entirely Harry Kane's fault as far as I'm concerned. He has sabotaged this great institution, and uh, there's not a lot else to say, really. They've just been relegated. <laughs> if you're wondering about Dover's records, Harlan did set the record for most league goals by a Dover player and most appearances and most goals in a season and the highest average. Okay, he has quite a lot of the records. Four goals in a match um, against Weymouth back in 2022. That was a little while ago now. He also has the most player of the matches in the season, most assists in the season with 19. He was quite a significant one-man band, wasn't he, when he was at the club? I am a little bit perplexed by the fact, despite all those records we've just seen, Erlen Haaland is only considered an icon. I don't know what a man has to do to become a legend at Dover, but apparently Haaland didn't do it and 400 goals isn't enough. Anyway, I think we will leave our adventure there. I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Erlen Haaland at Dover. If you did, as always, smash a like on it. 
If you've got any video ideas similar to this one that you would like to see here on the channel, let me know them down below. If you've binge watched all three parts and got to the end of the video and you're not yet subscribed, make sure to do that right now for more videos like this one. And until next time, take care. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.